welcome to a web of stories my name is Melinda and I am back for the second part of my series my second part of my series about series um, I should I don't know if this is a series there's only two so the second part of my duology about series um, the first one and I will try and put a card up for it if not I will link it below um, was about the series that I have read or I am reading that I am caught up with which means I have read every book that has been released as of right now and today I'm going to go through the books that I am still working on the series. So there are still books that have been published that are out there that I haven't read yet. Not all of these series are still active. There are a couple of them that are already complete, but I haven't read everything that's there yet. So the first one, I'm going to start with the one that you all know about because I talk about it all the time because it's my priority series to read right now. And that is the Ruth Galloway series by Ellie Griffiths. I love this series. It's, um, about a woman named Ruth Galloway. And she is, she's an archeologist, but more specifically, she's an expert on bones. And through her work, she um, meets and becomes involved with the local police, uh, police department who's you know, solving murders and they find bones all the time and all this sort of thing. And she becomes a little bit more involved with the detective, which is, that's a whole thing. But um, I love, I mean, Ruth is a great character. She's you know, kind of, she's middle-aged. She's, you know, she always talks about how overweight she is, but she probably isn't. We know how that goes. Um, and she's probably prettier than she thinks she is, but she's, she's okay with that because she's really successful in her career and she's very proud of the work that she does. And she's very confident in her own abilities, but she's also maybe a little insecure about some other things. Um, she's a very realistic character and the crimes that come up frequently in this series are crimes that are either tied to or there's a mirroring crime something like that that's in the past and in the past it could be stone age it could be medieval it could be world war ii but there's always this historical element and that's what i think i really like about this series um i've enjoyed all of the books and um as i said it's my priority series this is a series that is complete um the most the last for now, according to Ellie Griffiths, the last Ruth Galloway book has been released in the UK. And as of the time that I'm filming this, I don't think it's been released in the US yet, but it is soon to be released in the US. Um, the, so there will be a total of 15 books, plus I believe two novellas. Um, I have read the first seven books and one of the two novellas. I think I think there might be a third novella out there. Um, I only saw two on Goodreads, but I heard an interview with Ellie Griffiths. Um, she, I think it was on her own podcast where she mentioned another novella that's out there. So there might be three novellas. I'm not right sure about that, but that is my priority series. So I am really kind of making a point to finish that series up. And that's why some of these other series are just kind of the rest of my series. I still, I'm still reading them and I'm, you know, I, and I'm interested in finishing them, but right now my priority is on Ruth Galloway. The next series is probably going to be my next priority series because there's only one more book to go as of now and I own it. <laughs> so it's going to be easy for me to do. And that's the Alex Carter series by Alice Henderson. Um, so Alex Carter is a wildlife expert. I'm not really sure exactly what her, her um, job title is, but she studies wildlife. And so each of the books is about, she goes somewhere to, to study some wildlife. And I have learned so much about wolverines and polar bears from her books. So the first one was A Solitude of Wolverines. And the second one was A Blizzard of Polar Bears. So like a group of polar bears, it's called a blizzard. And there's no name for a group of wolverines because they aren't group animals. So she called it A Solitude of Wolverines. The third one, which I own and I have not read yet, it only came out probably, I, my guess is like six months ago is um, a ghost of caribou so that's the next one i'm going to be reading um, i do own it i hope to get to it soon so i can move this one over to my caught up list i really enjoy it i learn a lot about animals more than i probably ever cared to um, but and they're pretty good mysteries and there is a kind of like series arc going on that it's kind of it's a mystery in itself that i'm still trying to figure out what it is let's just say that alex has a, it sounds like she has a stalker but it's fun i i really like that series uh, the next one is one that is pretty popular, um, and I also really enjoy it. It's the Lady Sherlock series by Sherry Thomas, and this is a retelling of the Sherlock Holmes stories with Charlotte Holmes. Um, I know there's a there's a couple different series of like Sherlock Holmes retellings with a woman, but this is the one by Sherry Thomas. There are currently um, 
seven books out. The seventh one was just released, or maybe it's coming up. We're gonna say that it's just released. If it hasn't come out yet, it's like coming out in the next week or so. And I've read five of them. Um, I have the sixth one sitting on my Kobo. I just need to get to it. Um, all my library books came in at once, so that's all getting pushed to the side. I'm not a huge Sherlock Holmes person, but I have really enjoyed this series. I think this is a pretty strong series. The mysteries are good. I'm trying to figure out Charlotte. She's a little, she's a little enigmatic, but um, I think that that makes sense for what it is. So um, that's Lady Sherlock by Sherry Thomas. And that's one that's very uh, widely recommended to people. And I'll, I'll add my voice to that. That's a fun one to read. And then I have the Cash Black Bear series. So there are three books in this series and I have read two of them. And Cash is a Native American woman. These books are set in North Dakota in the 1970s. Um, the first one didn't really feel like, it didn't feel like a mystery to me. Like her life was very interesting but the, the mystery wasn't very good, but the second one, the mystery was much better. And the big question of the book is how someone who eat, who drinks and smokes as much as Cash does, how is she still alive? Because she really kind of lives on the edge. But um, she's a really empowering character. You know, she doesn't have a lot of privileges. She doesn't have any privileges, but she's still pretty successful in what she does. And she's, you know, a hard worker and she's determined. And um, I've really enjoyed those books. So, and the author is also indigenous. So, you know, it's nice to have um, a diverse book, a diverse, diverse book series like that. So the next one, and this one, I don't know if this one's complete or not. Um, and that's the Claire Ferguson and Russ Van Alstyne series by Julia Spencer Fleming. There are, uh, nine books and a novella currently out, and I've read eight of them. The publishing schedule on this is really, like, she can go years before putting a new book out. So I don't know if this book is complete. Maybe once I read that last book, I'll have a better idea or not, whether or not it's complete. But so far, I've read the first eight. And um, it's set in upstate New York in the Adirondacks. And Claire Ferguson is a former, uh, she's... Uh, retired military, but then she goes back in the military. That's a long thing. Um, but now she's an Episcopal priest and Russ Van Alstyne is the local cop and together they solve murders. And this appealed to me because I like the angle of her being an Episcopal priest. All the titles of the book of the books are lines from Episcopal hymns. I'm an Episcopalian, so I recognize them all. And then um, it's not, it's, this is not a Christian book, you know, one of those her, you know, Bethany House books. It's it's not like that, but uh, the author does kind of bring in the traditions of the Episcopal Church in, in a really beautiful way. And she tackles, tackles some really hard issues in this book, in these books. Um, and I'm really appreciating her kind of walking through things like PTSD and, you know, prescription drug abuse, things like that. Um, so I'm hoping to read the last book soon. I own it. Um, again, I just need to get to it. And then maybe I'll have a better idea whether or not it's complete. So we'll see. The next one is actually not a mystery one. And it's one I just started. And that's the Lady Astronaut Universe by Mary Robinette Kowal. Um, this was, <clears throat> excuse me. The first book was recommended to me through the My TBR service with Book Riot. And I was very apprehensive because it's, it's technically um, science fiction, which is a harder genre for me. However, that first book does not read like science fiction. It reads like alternate historical fiction. Um, the premise of the first book, as I've only read one, there's three out currently. The fourth one is, is coming soon. And then it looks like there's also two novellas. I've only read the first one. The basis of the first one, it's set in the 50s. And um, a meteor hits the ocean kind of like off the coast from Washington, D.C. A big meteor, like, you know, dinosaur extinction size meteor and uh, really quickly we learned that we're in an alternate universe because they refer to president dewey and you've seen the picture of dewey defeats eisenhower where all the papers ran said that dewey would defeat eisenhower but then eisenhower won well in this universe dewey won um the author has said that's because she felt like dewey was more pro-science than eisenhower which could very well be i, I, I she she would know but I also feel it's really useful to set this up as an alternate universe because this allows her to do things and not have to stick to history. So I thought that was really cool. But it's set in the 50s and the main character is a, she's a scientist, mathematician, I think. 
and they, she and her husband, who's also, um, she's a pilot actually, that's it, also a mathematician, but she and her husband get roped into like, what, the government. The government has had to move because like everyone's dead in Washington, D.C. and a bunch of people on the East Coast are dead because of the, the meteor or the asteroid or whatever. Um, they move the capital to Kansas City. They realize really quickly that there's gonna be a really awful um, effect from this meteor and that is that the temperature because the meteor landed in the ocean and it splashed up water into the atmosphere and it's going to change the environment so we're going to you know the, the world's going to go through a period of cold weather and then it's going to start heating up to the point where the earth is uninhabitable and that's going to happen very quickly so they have to figure out someplace else to live because they can't live on earth so this they start um a space program uh but of course because it's the 1950s and even though this is an alternate universe of course women aren't really welcome in this this program but she's a genius and this is what she wants to do and this is about her becoming an astronaut and so i'm sure that the the, the rest of the books are going to feel a little more science fictiony than this one did because this was a lot of setup but i really got into the characters and i'm really invested now and i need to know what happens so i'm going to read the science fiction books <laughs> I mean, it was kind of like that one just hooked me in. But that is The Lady Astronaut Universe by Mary Robinette Kowal. Oh, <laughs> so the next one is a series I may never finish. Um, my hope right now is that I outlive the author. <laughs> but that is the Commissario Brunetti series by Donna Leone. So true story about how I landed on this one. Um, Hillary Clinton has a podcast. And uh, for the last episode of the last season, um, she had like an ask me anything and I sent her a letter and they read it on her guest Kate McKinnon read it on air and I asked her for book recommendations and she recommended three series um I haven't started the other two so I'm not going to talk about them yet but if you're curious you can go look it up it's the most recent episode or the one that's an ask me anything um but one that she recommended was the Commissario Brunetti series by Donna Leone problem with this book is there's 32 books in the series so far it's still going um, <laughs> Donna Leone is, is currently now, I think 80 years old. So I think I have a good chance of outliving her and maybe finishing this series, but we'll see. Um, I just finished book four of this 32 book series, but it's set in Venice. Commissario Brunetti is a detective in Venice and he solves crimes in Venice, but it has a great sense of place. Um, I will say, so I have this thing when I read mis mysteries, especially that are kind of written a while ago, they always feel really weird to me because it's like, why don't you just use your cell phone to call someone and then the murder's over. Then I'm like, oh yeah, they don't have cell phones in the yeah, 1990 or whatever. So this book started, I believe in 90, I think the series was 94 or something like that. And it's written so that the cell phone thing is not an issue. But in the first book, there's a character who is in his like seventies or something. And as a young adult, he, he was a Nazi and conducted an orchestra for Hitler. And my mind is like trying to make this math work. And I could not think, I could, it kept slipping my mind that this book was set 30 years ago. Um, she comes out with a book every year. So it was set up 32 years ago. So it was been 1991 is when this came out. She's pretty, every year, another Commissario Brunetti book came out. Um, the newest one, actually, I think the newest one is not out by the time I'm taping this, but will be out when I drop this. So it's coming out. It's going to be a while before I get to it because I got a lot of books to read. They're good. They're good, strong mysteries. Um, I did have to DNF the third one because it was dated um, in a way that made me, it wasn't comfortable to read. It dealt, the, let's just say in 1993 or four or whenever this was, we had different language around LGBTQ issues. And so I don't, I, I'm not saying that I think Donna Leone is homophobic or anything like that because I think she was talking, that was the world we lived in then, but it's still uncomfortable to read. So I did opt to DNF the third book, but I was able to pick the fourth one up just fine. It wasn't an issue. Okay, next one. Oh, <laughs> so the next one is the Kerner and Werner series by Katrine Engbert. And I've, there's five books in this one. I've read the first one. I don't know if I'll read all five because I don't think the second one has been translated into English from the Danish. Um, police duo, and I do think this one might be complete too. I'm not sure, I'll have to check on that. This might be a complete series now. This is set in Copenhagen. It is Nordic noir, so it's like 
gross at times and just, you know, a little disgusting. Um, dark crimes, but I kind of like the interplay between these two, these two detectives. Um, I listened to the first one and I'm glad I did because now I know how the names are pronounced and I got a feel of it, but I think going forward I will read them instead of listen to them. Um, but yeah, I'm going to try this one. As I said, I don't, I don't think I'm going to be able to read the second book because I don't read or speak or understand in the least Danish, but there you go. So that's the Krona and the Werner series by Katrine Engerberg. There's only two left. <laughs> okay, so the second to last one is the Rachel Getty and Asa Kadek series by Ausma Zahanek Khan. There's currently five books of this one, plus one novella, and I have read the first book. Um, this book is set in Canada. Um, it's the detective is Asa Kadek, who is a Muslim man, and then his partner is Rachel Getty, who is a younger woman. As far I, there doesn't seem to be anything romantic between the two, and I don't think there ever will be. I've only read the first book. I don't know, but it's a really interesting interplay. Um, a lot of people said they think this is going to be like the next Louise Penny. I, I I wouldn't say that because I think the books are a little bit different, um, very on some very fundamental levels. But the first one I read was still a really good mystery, and it really kept my attention. And I do plan to read more. Um, I will say I've kind of put this one a little bit to the back burner until I kind of catch up on some of these where I'm only like one book behind. So as soon as I catch up on those ones that are just right on the edge, I will I'll go back and hit this one again. But that one's the Rachel Getty and Asa Kadak series by um, Ausma Zahanek Khan. And finally, and um, this is another series that is complete for now. <laughs> and that is The Cop Sisters by Amy Stewart. So this is, um, they're based on a true family of sisters, three sisters um, in the early part of the 20th century who solved murders and they were the cop sisters. Um, Amy Stewart did a lot of research on them. I have all but I think the last book, but I've only read the first one. <laughs> so I need to read this one because I own the books, but I really enjoyed it. Um, I do know because I went to like an author tea with Amy Stewart after shortly after I read the first book and she did say that she kind of like writes each book in a very different way. So um, I'm interested to see what comes up in the later books. But she also recently said that she kind of feels that at this moment in time, she doesn't need to write any more cop sister books. So I guess we can consider the series complete unless she decides to revive it at some point in the future. Um, same with the Ruth Galloway series. Ellie Griffiths has said, been very clear that this is it for Ruth Galloway unless she decides it isn't. So I can cross my fingers and pray and hope that we get more Ruth Galloway, but I think that one is done and for we can, should consider the Cop Sisters done. So I had my eight complete series and my, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, my 10 in progress series. Um, I don't really have like a goal to like finish X number of series or whatever like that. I know a lot of people do and I, I respect that. And I think that there might at some point become, that might become a thing for me. But right now, this isn't a goal. I will just say that I am really enjoying Ruth Galloway and that's what I'm concentrating on. And then I will work on these other series as opportunity appears. But yeah, those are the series that I have going. Um, are there any series that you are kind of in the midst of or you think based on what I have talked about? you think I might like? If so, because I'm not averse to adding more to this list. Um, if so, just put them down in the comments. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.